Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Care. Um, so today's video is going to be on um, a particular health issue which is actually very common in older rats. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I haven't got um, the virus by the way, I've just got a cough. Mm. Um, but yes, th this particular health, health problem is something that's very common in older rats and it's something that there's a lot of kind of misconceptions around that I find um, and that is hind leg degeneration. So, hey Mog, are you interested in joining in? Um, Mog is going to be particularly useful today because um, she has a degree of hind leg degeneration. Um, so, first thing to understand about hind leg degeneration is it's not just one illness. What it is, is effectively a symptom and the symptom is that in um, older rats you'll find that they begin to lose some of their strength in their hind legs, hence the name. Um, and Mog is a particularly perfect example of this. Now, if we watch her walking, um, you'll notice that she's got quite a shuffling gait. Um, she holds her kind of body quite low to the ground and her legs are fairly weak. The other classic telltale symptom, oh, sorry Mog, don't do this when Rat is balancing, is particularly towards the bottom end of a tail, it's very loose. Now let's take a younger rat. So this is Wick. Wick, you see her tail's a lot tenser. Now when Wick moves around, she lifts her body up a lot more. She also lifts her heels up. She's not got that kind of what we call flat-footed gait. And that's a classic symptom of hind leg degeneration. Um, but in actual fact, hind leg degeneration is made up of three different common causes. And I'll go kind of in order of most common. So the first most likely, um, and I should say Fing also has it, if you notice her, her walk and how flat her tail like drifts on the floor versus Fu here who's showing how, how like a normal young fit rat walks, which is why I thought this group would really good, be a good one to demonstrate it with. So the first most common cause of hind leg degeneration is actually kidney related. So, and I should really do a whole video on kidney issues. It's, it's quite, it's another incredibly common illness in old age. Um, in older rats, the kidneys naturally start to fail. As, and generally you're kind of unaware of this. It's just an accumulation. The, the, the kidneys are kind of body filters. They pick up a load of crap through their life. They're doing the job and they're doing it well. But in rats, it's one of the weak links. A bit like kind of like livers can be in humans. Um, the kidney is particularly weak in, in rats and those in hearts tend to be the two most common causes of old age-like symptoms. And hind leg degeneration is a form of old age-like symptom. It kind of causes them to be less active in the early stages. It causes them to be a little bit shuffle-footed. As it progresses, they can turn to kind of full paralysis of the back end over time. And it's a very gradual process, I should say this. So the kidney li linked one, um, Nobody's entirely kind of absolutely sure why kidney degeneration is linked with hind leg degeneration. Um, now, I've, I've looked into it a bit because it's an area that interests me, um, particularly as I went, uh, the days when I just used to keep boys and that was my focus. And hind leg degeneration is incredibly common in boys, um, much more obvious than it is in does. Does tend to get it a bit later, it progresses a lot more slowly. Um, probably testosterone, that's accounted for an awful lot. But their kidneys do degenerate faster in boys than girls, and that's quite a common thing, which is why you see a lot more of the hind leg degeneration there, because it is normally kidney linked. Um, but when I looked into it, we're seeing links between things like the way the kidneys are involved in kind of processing excess protein and that kind of thing. And actually the kidneys get hit, the more protein a rat takes, the more um, kind of damage the kidneys get and it becomes less efficient at using um, protein. Hey Mark, are you showing off the camera? Um, so they become less and less efficient at um, kind of processing all those proteins and they lose muscle because of it. And something that is commonly seen in a rat with hind leg degeneration, and hopefully Mog will show this with her lovely bum, is this kind of like slight pinched over the spine. They basically, as you stroke their back, you'll notice that their spine feels a lot less kind of coated by muscle. So a young fit rat, like little snuffkin here, has a beautifully kind of like rounded bum. Sorry, Mug is probably standing on my camera. She's um, cooperative. You just want to be the star, don't you? Whereas Mug, Mug doesn't have that. She has a much more kind of pinched rear end. And that's because she's losing this muscle. And she's losing her muscles around her back legs. She's losing it over her spine and she's losing it a bit in her tail as well. And they tend to be, if, if you have a rat that's actually really short on nutrition, um, that's where they lose the muscles first too. They're kind of the sacrificial places. They keep all the kind of important nutrients to supporting the stuff around the organs. Um, and, and that is kind of like a common thing. And it's probably linked with kidney degeneration causing these hind leg type symptoms. Um, 
And, and yes, you see them quite hand in hand. The rat will start struggling to keep weight on. The rat will um, kind of like start showing hind leg degeneration. It might just lose a bit of condition and not find it quite as easy to stay into condition. Um, various things like that, though in reality that can be caused by a number of different factors. In fact, Mog has all of these kind of symptoms. Um, she's a skinny little ass who doesn't like eating. Um, yeah, lots of lack of appetite is often linked with kidneys. Um, but nevertheless, this kind of like lack of being able to fully process um, all, all the kind of nutrients can lose, lead to this kind of muscle wastage that you see. And so the kind of difficulties with the um, hind legs and the kind of basically weakness in that area. So that's a very common one. And the way you tell if it's kidneys is, let's see, I've got some over here. We use these things. So these are urine analysis strips. Um, you can get these on Amazon, they're sold for humans. Basically, they're a little dipstick. And I should really do a completely separate video on this because they're incredibly useful diagnostic tools. Everybody should have a pack of these in their um, first aid box. But yes, so let's get this on there. Basically, you put, put one of those through a kind of nice, decent amount of urine on a clean surface, and then you read it. Um, for kidney issues, um, they will show quite high protein so protein comes along here and you're talking around about these kind of darker greens um, if it turns to that in the time it says um, then the likelihood is that rat has a degree of kidney degeneration um, by the time it's showing on those strips it will have advanced a little bit it would be reasonably advanced but that's t if you see the kind of like high protein and you're seeing hind leg degeneration then you know that it's pretty much going to be not um it's pretty much going to be um kidney related so that is quite common um, knowing that my rats never pee on command I actually did manage to get um, both Mog and Finn you Finn or Snuffing or Snuffkin um, both Mog and Finn to do a pee the other day and interestingly enough Mog does not have kidney degeneration so her hind leg degeneration is not caused by that um, she is my oldest rat as well which is quite impressive that her kidneys are still in such good shape snuffkin however does have mild signs of kidney degeneration so it's likely that hind, her hind leg degeneration is caused by that so that's the most common sign um, so we take it from there and then we think the next most likely so what what a lot of things you end up doing with rats is you take the most likely rule it out or in um, deal with the most likely and then move on to the next and the next and so on but I, trying to identify what it might be is quite useful so the next most likely is nervous degeneration um, so that causes very floppy kind of legs it's basically the nerves along the spine are just getting like a little bit worn down we see it in humans yes i love you too mug um we see it in humans too and they just start getting a little weak um it can sometimes cause pains in humans i've not seen many rats with kind of painful versions of it kind of sciatica that kind of thing um but they just start wearing out and um they call it kind of demyelation oh, i can't pronounce that properly of the nerves so they're not sending signals quite as effectively which makes things go floppy and actually means that the muscle wastage occurs as, as well and we understand that one a lot more um it isn't as common but it does happen um, and it does happen in rats um fairly regularly generally speaking if you've got a rat that's got this kind of like floppy loose gait um, weakness in the hind legs and they've not got kidney degeneration it's probably going to be this demyelation of the nerves and um, causing that problem the final one, which is interestingly the one that most vets go to because it's most common in other animals um, and it's also the ones that most people logically link to because it's just something that everybody understands and has heard of, is arthritis. So arthritis is actually, it still causes this hind leg degeneration but it's quite different and you can physically observe that in the rat. So sadly none of mine currently have arthritic hind leg degeneration. But what you're looking for is a rat, when they move, they move quite stiffly. Um, so whereas kind of like Mog and Fig, I think Burko has a degree of hind leg degeneration too. Come on, Burke, let's show off at the camera. Um, that kind of like low, kind of slightly kind of draggy gait. Um, it looks very relaxed and slightly floppy. Um, that is very much... A, um, I haven't got enough muscles to kind of do what I want to do anymore. Arthritis is caused by the kind of joint getting full of crap and getting stiff. Um, and that causes them to be a lot more jerky in the motion. It can quite often be one-sided as well, or they're kind of like clearly in pain. Now, if you see those kind of symptoms, then um, you want to get painkiller to try and treat it. Um, so Metacam, that kind of thing. 
But the reason why um, we don't automatically try that is because um, Metacam and similar stuff, um, they're incredibly harsh on the kidneys. Um, they will accelerate degeneration. And if a rat is in pain, then it's no question, you use the painkiller. However, if a rat is not in pain, so it's got the kidney-related um, degeneration or the nervous-related degeneration, we don't want to be giving them a load of painkiller, which will artificially age their kidneys and make it kind of worse a lot faster. So it's kind of understanding that difference. If you take your rat to the vet and the vet, rat, and the vet sorry, doesn't know rats particularly well, they're likely to give you that, but it's worth discussing it with them. Um, what you can do, if you're really not sure, is put them on it for a few days. If you see the rat noticeably improve, its mobility improving, um, then you know there's probably an arthritic element to it or a pain element to it, and then continue it, but continue it at the lowest dose that gives you that improvement in symptoms. And sometimes you have to keep trying, trying lowering the dose until you get to the lowest you can and that rat is still happy, um, and see how they get on with that. Um, however, if you're sure it's arthritic, just go straight straight to it and, and kind of get the right amount. If you're sure it's not arthritic, don't bother with the Metacam. Um, but trying it for a few days is not going to do long-term damage. Um, but I've seen people, in fact, one of um, one of my pet homes recently um, had been had their rat on it for quite a, quite a reasonable amount of time because the vet just saw it as, like, for the rest of its life, it's going to need um, Metacam to manage the pain from arthritis. Um, but when she started it, it wasn't, didn't offer any real difference. And when she stopped it, it didn't really offer any difference. Um, and that is kind of, like, common um, with the kind of either the kidney failure-related one or the nervous degeneration-related one. Um, so immediately you just stop that and there's no point putting the rat under any more kind of stress or medication that it doesn't need and doesn't benefit from. Right, so those are the three types. So what do we do about it? What's the prognosis and, and how are things going to go? So it does really depend a little bit on the type, but both the first two, the kind of floppy versions, they tend to progress very slowly. Um, some people, when they first realise their rat's got hangline degeneration, will immediately kind of like take it really hard because it's not something you can fix. Um, it is something that will kind of continue to potentially progress and worsen until the rat dies. Um, and that sounds like a death sentence. But in reality, high degeneration generation is kind of part of a rat getting older. Some will get it earlier on in life, some will get it later on in life. So Mog's my oldest rat. She has a degree of high degeneration. generation. She's about 20, 25 months now, don't you, Missy? Um, but hers isn't really bad. Um, I've had books show symptoms a lot earlier. Wherever Burko is, he's been showing symptoms for a little while now. Uh, I have no idea. He's probably up to something no good. Um, or he's hiding behind Mog. He's hiding behind Mog and under here. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, Burko's been showing it, it, symptoms of it for probably a few months now, probably from when he's about 18 months and a little bit younger. Um, whereas, and, and that is quite common. Books will tend to show symptoms a little bit earlier. Um, around about 18 months, if you spot it early, um, and it's in a book, I wouldn't get too concerned about it. You're probably talking about um, six months, a year, if it's managed appropriately. Um, supporting a good diet. If it's kidney related, diet plays a massive part. So trying to make sure that you give them a kidney friendly diet, which means low protein, low phosphorus. Um, phosphorus is found in a lot of kind of whole grains, uh, particularly wheat and oats. So trying to minimise those in the diets. Um, there's a lot of work you can do around um, a mix for that. Yes, your legs are very floppy. Um, the other thing is, like, if you spot it early, it's a good thing, um, and it's, it is something that's going to progress. But like I say, Burko's been kind of floppy legs for months now. It hasn't really got any worse. Um, it will do at some point, and I find with the kidney-related one in particular, it tends to be kind of like low level for quite a long time. And then once they start getting really old and things start kind of breaking down, and actually when they start using the legs less themselves, then they do start going downhill a lot more quickly. And you'll kind of notice they will lose condition in themselves. They, they will kind of, the legs will progress quite quickly. Um, but it is something that takes time. And it, we're talking about months, um, months of them staying perfectly the same. Um, in some rats, I, I've not seen them progress, so they've started with signs of hind leg degeneration, and then you're probably talking eight, nine months, and then they may go over completely unrelated cars without it really advancing particularly significantly. Um, what I suspect is that with the kidney form, um, it starts off, it's a very mild level form of kind of like muscle wastage, and then as the rats kind of 
they kind of get older and then eventually they will get other forms of hind leg degeneration and then that when that cat starts kicking in that's what starts causing that gradual decline but whilst it's just down to the kidneys it doesn't do much other than make them kind of less efficient at kind of holding muscle um, and of course the back end gets affected first because it's the least important um, so that's why you don't see a, a fast progression with that with the nervous form i find that it's a very slow but gradual kind of progression um, but like i say um, i've been spotting it in mog for probably a few weeks now it's not really got noticeably worse um, i'm having to keep a little bit eye on my cage setup but i have had to for a while because burko's not exactly full of grace bless him um, and and that's um one thing to look out for um, with the arthritic form it's a lot more obvious um, and it's something that can progress faster if it's not controlled properly with kind of painkillers but is a very different kind of thing um, and and painkillers and actually feeding things like um, glucosamine um, you can get little treats for dogs that are quite nice to give to the rats um, omega oils that kind of thing and interestingly enough omega oils like linseed oil and omega-3 and 6 oils particularly omega-3 oils, have been shown to be really beneficial in both kidney degeneration and obviously mobility issues. So if you've got a rat that's, basically, if you've got a rat that's older, make sure you're giving them regular linseed oil or flax oil, which is the more expensive version of linseed oil. You get linseed oil as the salt for animals, and then they repackage the linseed oil into flax oil and sell it for humans, probably do a bit more processing, but it's basically the same thing. Um, hemp oil is another one that's good, good for um, high omega-3. Anything like that, it's really beneficial for an older rat, particularly one with hind leg degeneration. Um, in terms of the nervous issues, what's really good from that point of view is B vitamins. So B vitamins have been linked with slowing kind of nervous degeneration in humans, in dogs, in cats, in rats as well. Um, so giving a supplement that contains high levels of that, so things like um, senior aid, which can be a pain in the bum to get hold of, so I don't have any in at the moment. What I do have, which has B vitamins in, now I'm getting stiff. My age. something called mobile bones sold for dogs it's just a powder that i add to the wet food but it's got reasonable amounts of some of the b vitamins in there um it's it's not as good as um kind of senior aid but it's got b1 b6 biotin etc in there so that's quite useful from the point of view of the nervous degeneration so um mog regularly gets that to be fair, all my oldies get linseed oil and some of this in a regular kind of meal. If you've confirmed that it's kidney linked, um, then a really good supplement to give is epactine. So epactine is a phosphate binder. Um, there are probably other versions of this, but it's specifically designed for um, animals with kidney problems. So you do want to done your dipstick and confirmed high levels of protein in the urine before you do that, because they do need phosphorus. Um, but adding a little bit of this to the meal up to kind of once a day um, is very useful as well. So these supplements are really good for old rats um, and they will help rats with high degeneration degeneration progress slower, more slowly. And I would say any rat um, that's over a kind of like about 18 months, you should be starting to think about kidney friendly stuff. You won't go as far as perhaps um, your epactine, but you should be looking at the diet and thinking, right, how can I improve that? How can I um, kind of lower phosphorus? How can I make sure the protein is low? And by low, I mean around about the 12% protein um, versus let's say 14 for a healthy adult and higher than that for kittens. Um, but yes, you can even go a little bit lower than 12% though. You, it's kind of particularly in a group like this. I've got a mixed age group, so I want to try and cater for everybody. Um, what I should say, actually, I sometimes do with that. Oh no. The rat's got hold of the malt paste. <laughs> I shouldn't have left that nuts off the shelf. Right. Oh. So I refuse a few, remove a few characters. Right, I should have quickly get this. So in older rats, one thing that um, I tend to do is particularly like Mog and Fing, who can be a little bit skinny at the moment, um, they get extra meals um, just to kind of fatten them up. And any rat with kind of kidney degeneration, you'll probably find that you do need to do that unless they're fat to start with. And I'll be frank, if they're fat to start with and they've got high length degeneration, put them on a diet because ultimately by them being fat, um, they're going to kind of struggle because they have to shift more weight around on what are quite weakened legs. Um, so do try and kind of like diet them, but diet them carefully because if they've got kidney degeneration, if they've got, if they're an older rat, if they've kind of got anything else going on, 
Uh, the rats are escaping. Excuse me while I just catch somebody. Yes, I can see you thing. I would blame that on her hangnail degeneration, but she really just wanted to be on the ground and use me as a ladder. Um, but yes, so um, when you're kind of like dealing with that, it's quite normal to give them extras. Now, if I had a rat group that was just oldies, I would be giving them um, a dry mix that was much kind of higher in processed grains and lower in kind of like um, kind of whole grains. And that's because the whole grains have the kind of higher phosphorus content, like I mentioned before. But one way I do it when I'm taking the rats out for feeding is I give them some of the dry mix, but I mix it with what I call one of my oldie mixes, which there is a video on how to put it together. But this is really just a mixture of processed grains that are old rat friendly. Yes. Ooh, can't smell that. So all sorts of bits and pieces, and they do quite like it. And I just mix this with the normal mix. Um, so effectively, they get a slightly, oh, not a wet tail in the face. That's really unpleasant. Um, they effectively get um, a kind of watered down um, version. And they like these processed grains. They like them because they are a little bit fattening, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm offering them um, little bits and pieces. Let's see what I can find, especially from Mog out here. Are you happy with that? Can you make a bit of bread? Right there, no, you, you're young, you don't need any more. Um, but yeah, so I use that, I'll mix that a little with a bit of the dry mix, about a third of that to two thirds of the dry mix and stick it in their cage so they kind of basically get a more kidney friendly mix when they're in there, but I don't have to have two mixes made up, um, which is useful for me. And the rest of the time they get fed the normal dry mix with the rest of the group. Um, I'll also sometimes give them extra wet meals and that kind of thing, um, which there, there is another video I think I did way back at the start with really crap sound. Um, but hopefully you can understand it. If not, I will refilm re it at some point. But yes, so feeding them something like that can help it. It can help support their systems. Um, one thing I really should mention though, is there is a tendency towards, when you see your rat starting to kind of, with hind leg weakness, starting to kind of be slower to move around, starting to stumble a little bit more, um, the tendency is to think, right, I should put them in a low level cage. I should move, downgrade them, I should, um, kind of make it easy for them because they're struggling to get around and it's kind of a natural caring thing to do. But one thing that's really important that I found with any rats with kind of pine leg degeneration is you want to keep them moving as much as possible. Um, you need to do it in a kind of safe way as far as possible, but the easier you make things, um, the faster they lose it. Um, and if they can keep, no, that's box. Yes. Um, if they can keep, um, keep going, <laughs> little asshole, he's a muscular, she's an old lady. Um, and then a daughter tries to steal it from her daughter. She raised you. Yes, she did. No care for the elderly. Um, but yes, so I've completely lost my train of thoughts now. I should not get distracted by the rats. Um, where was I? All right, yes. Yeah, so if, if you allow them to kind of like just mooch around a single level cage or one with like start putting ramps everywhere so they just kind of have to barely like move themselves or just it's so easy for them. They're not really getting much exercise. Um, then what you find is they will lose it faster. Um, and so the, the real key thing I found in slowing progression as far as possible is keep them moving as much as they can, as you can but do it so that it's safe. So that means when you're talking about a big cage, put in plenty of fall breakers, but allow them to climb as long as they're comfortable and able to. Um, Mog and um, Fing and actually Burko, they all live in my normal cage. It's a very active setup. Um, they get around perfectly fine. They have to be a little bit more careful and I've put a lot more stuff that's kind of more stable um, so that they can get around everywhere while sticking on the stable stuff whilst the younger things can bound around on the like wobbly stuff that's around it. Um, so they have kind of like safe options. They don't always take the safe op options, um, but they have them and that's quite important. Um, as it progresses, and uh, I'm, I've no doubt in probably, I don't know, three to six months, uh, Mogs might have progressed further and I might have to start seriously thinking about maybe her, Burko and Fing moving into a, a kind of more safe cage. Um, but I will generally, base that on what they can do and what they choose to do. If I notice that they're restricting themselves to a single part of the cage um, because it's too much hard work to get around, that's when I'll be thinking about moving them down. Um, and I would say do that, judge it off the rat, don't judge it off your perceptions because rats are incredibly capable animals. Um, they, they can achieve stuff that we wouldn't even think about at their age. Um, Mog is a bit of an old lady now, but you wouldn't think it from um, how she acts about life. Um, and I think it's important to respect that because 
actually a lot of rats get a lot of quality of life. It's not just about um, slowing down the progression of the kind of issue. It's also about their quality of life and they enjoy running around and climbing and doing stuff. So um, give them that option for as long as possible and they will stay young for as long as possible as well. Um, just support them. So do things like Mog and Fing and um, come out every two days and spend the night in the feeding cage. So they get like loads and loads of food to cram into them, particularly Mog because she, she is skinny and does not eat particularly well. She kind of like lose interest in food quite quickly. Mog, 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 Mog. No, no, everybody else is interested. Run! Somebody will steal it off her soon because she doesn't really care that much. Um, but yes, um, so that kind of thing, working around the thing and, and helping them keep as active and agile as possible. Even Burko, Burko is, has not been elegant for a, a long time now, yet yeah, he's perfectly happy in the cage and he's got this kind of level of comfort. He's not as active as perhaps the youngsters, but he does really well. Um, he's also probably a little bit fat, but you can actually, if, even though he's a bit chubby, you can still kind of feel his spine. You probably can't see it on the camera but he's kind of more peak, peaked along his back than he used to be as a young thing. Uh, but he's not bad really, are you, Burko? He says, doing a really big poo on camera. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. You're a good boy. Um, right, so that's kind of hind leg degeneration. I've talked about it a lot. Um, it's quite a big, interesting topic for me. Um, it's probably bored for you people, I am sorry, but it's something that every rat owner will come up to at some point in their life. Um, and it's worth spotting it at this stage when it's mild and not really bothering them so that you're aware of it and you can take that action early on to slow it down. And also you don't get to the stage where um, suddenly your rat is kind of like barely able to walk and drag itself along. Um, and that, that is quite quite kind of helpful. It, it lets you get accustomed to the fact that this is, this is like the way things are going to be now. And like I say, slow it down so it progresses as slowly as possible. And the rat's kept as comfortable as possible for um, a good long time. Um, when it gets quite advanced, then you do have to start questioning quality of life. And I'd encourage people to watch my quality of life video for that one. Um, because I could talk about it again, but I've, I've covered it in more depth than I will for that one. Because... It does matter to some rats quite a lot when they can't look after themselves and less to other rats. Um, so it's one that you're going to have to judge on a case by case basis. Um, and kind of the other thing to mention about this is hind leg degeneration is very, it doesn't come on quickly. Um, you don't wake up one day and your rat is unable to move. Um, I've seen people think it might be hind leg degeneration when that's happened, when in reality that's some other issue. So if you've suddenly got a, a degree of kind of like hind leg weakness in a rat that the, the day before was absolutely fit and healthy um, and never shown any signs of being slightly wobbly or slightly kind of like droopy footed, then it's likely there's something else. Um, you can have fall damage, so damage to the spine and that can kind of like weaken the whole back end suddenly or even paralyze it. Um, and you can have, um, so I should mention, if you see that, get them to the vet straight away and get them put on a steroid, not um, med Metacam or a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Um, they, they just won't cut it. What you really need is a steroid and small cage rest. So as soon as it happens, stick them in a small single level cage, like my kind of feeding cage, so that kind of size, not a, not a kind of camp, kind of proper hamster cage size thing, a tiny little thing or a carrier if you've not got one of those. So you're minimising the amount of mo movement they're going to do. Um, and then get them to the vet, get them on a steroid. Um, in about a week-ish, you're probably going to see about as much improvement as you will from the steroid alone, but it's a really efficient anti-inflammatory, very useful. Um, I just thought I'd mention that because some vets default to Metacam because steroids do hit the immune system, so they do have a downside, but Metacam will not touch the kind of spinal injury that's caused that level of damage in a rat. It's different if it's a sprain, a small limb, that kind of thing, but if it's proper hind leg paralysis that's come on suddenly, you don't want to mess with it. Um, you can get a degree of hind leg degeneration that comes on sudden, or hind leg weakness, should I say, that comes on suddenly from um, a stroke, but that will typically be a bit one-sided and or will affect the whole rat's body. Um, and I'll do a different video on strokes because it's kind of like a, a whole other kind of game to kind of talk about. Um, and you can also get kind of like hind leg stiffness, um, kind of weakness. Typically the rat will do a lot of kind of like stretching out their back legs, um, pain symptoms. 
um, and that is typically um, a urine infection or a kidney infection um, and they can give hind leg related symptoms as well but again they come on very quickly they may also get worse um, typically they will show signs of pain and stiffness and uncomfortableness as well as sometimes weakness and in extreme cases paralysis normally an infection sometimes kidney stones bladder stones that kind of thing because they're horrific as well um, but again they come on fast so the key key thing with hind leg degeneration which is sometimes called hind leg paralysis but that's i refer to degeneration because hind leg paralysis could cover all those things i've just talked about and there's like five or six or more conditions and um, but hind leg degeneration is degeneration it, it slowly gets worse it doesn't come on suddenly you're it's something that you might you might only notice after a while and it might be that you've missed the early symptoms of it because you're not used to seeing that and it's something um some people get very good at spotting. I'm a bastard for it um, because I've been so conscious of it for so many years now. I can spot it in people's rats way before they can. I, I, I quite often pick it up in the judging table. Um, and, and that's something that I don't particularly like doing, but it's quite a useful thing that experienced judges will often look out for as well. Anything like that, that as an owner, you may not be experienced enough to pick up on, but to an experienced owner or a kind of judge, it's just like straight away, right, that guy's rat's got hind leg degeneration. Um, so that that's kind of like something to bear in mind in this one. It is degeneration. So really quick summary because I've talked too much. Um, hind leg degeneration is kind of a, a, sympt a collection of symptoms rather than a cure. Those symptoms are weaknesses, floppiness in the back legs, um, kind of lack of muscle over the spine, kind of pinched along the kind of flanks. The tail is often quite floppy towards the tip. It might still have quite a bit of mobility at the bottom, kind of like the base part. Um, this part but the tip bit is likely to be much more floppy um, and kind of general slowing down clumsiness falling over and I should say hang leg degeneration rats are more prone to getting legs like, stuck in things or falling off things um, you don't have hang leg degeneration you're just clumsy um, but yes um, three different types kidney degeneration is the most common type um, you can pick that up by using um, urine analysis strips that are sold for humans make sure you get ones with protein on it and um, for other things make sure you also get ones that have blood glucose on it and um, those are the main ones there's other things that can tell you stuff but as long as you've got blood gl glucose and protein that will help you enormously so if you see protein levels in the urine and you've got high lung degeneration it's most likely at least partially kidney related um, if you don't see any of that and you see that kind of floppiness and that gradual degeneration and it's likely to be nervous so nerve demyelination which i'm sure i'm pronouncing really long and i'm so wrong i'm sorry for biologists out there i'm just a bit crap um but basically a breakdown in the kind of nerve system which makes them less effective um and then the third type is arthritic and that phys visibly looks different it looks stiffer it looks tenser the rat is kind of in some pain it's quite often one-sided and it's kind of a very stiff jerky gait rather than floppy um kind of like low gait like Berko is demonstrating here um, and those are the three different types and um, the first two types you want to keep the rat moving you want to keep it fit and active you want to make sure it's got a kidney friendly diet you want to um, make sure you're giving them plenty of high omega-3 oils like linseed oil um, b vitamins um, and kind of like generally looking after kind of old age dietary supplements, looking after the needs, watching their weight, uh, make sure they're, they're not fat, but also um, kind of if they're struggling to keep weight on them, giving them extra foods. Um, and then for the arthritic version, you can manage it with um, painkillers, but you want the lowest possible dose that will give you the kind of improved symptoms because it will affect the kidneys. And at, at the age when arthritis is coming into play, um, that matters. You don't want to kind of like weaken the kidneys anymore because then you could have two forms of hind leg degeneration in the same rat. It's not really what they need. Um, but if the rat's in pain, resolving the pain comes first. Um, it always comes first. If it accelerates another condition, at least they're going to have a happy life, even if it's going to be a little bit shorter, and that's more important. Um, so that's the main thing. Um, I've talked far too much. I did not think I would do. 34 minutes, nearly 35 minutes on um, hang leg degeneration. Um, but hopefully that's useful for you. Um, hopefully it gives you a bit of hope because it's not something that's um, a death sentence by any means for a rat. It's something that's a slow progression 
part of being an older rat, but something that we can help with and we can make their kind of life happier for longer and slow things down. So that's it from me. And we have Twizzle and Fing currently. Everybody else is off doing things. And Fing wants to meet the camera and cause problems. I've got to turn that button off now, you know, trouble. Um, maybe Fing will puss it off with a nose. Um, just a bit of a sec, can't quite do this. Uh, but yeah, over and out from me and the Asami rats and see you soon.